Hey, good morning again. We are back. I hope you had some time to rest and have a coffee. The morning, the first part of the morning was wonderful. We had some very, very interesting lectures when it's clear, and it was clear, and it was stated clear, that anything we do is teachable, feasible, reproducible. Is that right, Ronaldo? Absolutely. You can uh, listen to the presentation. Today is Sunday, and Monday morning, you can put on practice what you just saw. From surgery, to, um, for bypassing the broken instrument, removal of broken instrument, and taking care of unusual and very strange anatomy. We cover many, many topics, one interesting more than the other. Each one very, very interesting. It was very, very uh, beautiful presentations. So now we are switching to one of our main member's presentation about uh, root canal obturation. So we call on the stage Dr. Filippo Cardinali. Thank you so much. It's a, a big honor to me and it's a great emotion to see you all here and the atmosphere is really, really positive. So my lecture is about uh, the possibility to get a teachable, feasible, repeatable root canal obturation. We know that the obturation of the root canal system plays a very important role in order to get a positive outcome of the therapy. We know that when we have bacteria inside the canal that are left from a previous treatment, the persistence of bacteria can lead to a negative outcome. And it's quite normal to have a, a periapical lesion. And in this case, we have always a poor feeling. And in the empty spaces, we can always find bacteria. So what we do in our practice is basically to shape, clean, and then to try to completely fill the root canal system in order to get a positive outcome and in order to get a long-term follow-up that is really important for us, but is even really important for the patients. And if the bacteria are the problem, honestly, we have a big problem because in a clinical reality, we will know how it is impossible to sterilize completely a root canal system. But fortunately, we have a solution. And the solution are the warm gut aperture techniques. So we have to try to completely fill the root canal system in order to entrap the bacteria, in order to entomb the bacteria, and then to seal the apical foramen and the orifice, avoiding percolation bacteria from outside to inside the root canal system. And thanks to the AKV system by MetaBiomed, we can carry out three out of four the warm gut aperture technique. AKV system is an endodontic cordless obturation system. Uh, we have two devices. One is the AKV pack, that is for the down packing using the vertical compaction or the shielder technique if you prefer. I prefer shielder technique, honestly, and even the continuous way of condensation, whilst the AKV fill is for the back filling after the down packing, and it's even the instrument to use for the squirting technique. We can, uh, the AKV pack has different, we can have different sizes of the tip, and this is re really useful in order to carry out the vertical compaction, the shielder technique. We know that to carry out properly this technique, we need at least three requirements. The first one is the possibility to have a neat carrier that arrives without touching the lateral canal walls at least at five millimeters from the apical foramen. Then we need even a plugger to pack the gut aperture, a small plugger that can arrive at five millimeters from the working length without touch canal ball. And last but not least, we need a very good cone. The cone fit has to be perfect. We need a cone with a strong tuck back, and this tuck back has to arise from the apical third of the canal. So what we do basically is to melt in gutta percha and then to pack in apical direction gutta percha with a plugger. 
and probably we need two or three times to arrive to five millimeter for the working length. And it's, during the packing, it's really important to collect the good aperture on the lateral walls in order to have always a flat plateau, platform of good aperture. And once we arrive at, at five millimeter, then it's time for the back filling. And we can easily uh, carry out the back filling using the AKV fill. Thanks to a, a really easy bendable needle, we place the needle, we wait uh, five to 10 seconds in order to melt the platform of good aperture, and then we start with the injection. And we inject the good aperture until we feel that the, there is a, a back pump of the needle, and then we can pack the good aperture. The needle is really easy to bend using the proper tool, this key from uh, MetaBiomed, and could work even in an extremely situation like in this one. So no problem can arise from the needle. And this is the case after obturation, and we know how, thanks to a proper confit, it is really easy to control the overfilling with the shielder technique. We can use this device even for the continuous wave of condensation. During this technique, we know that we, at the same time, we melt and we pack in apical direction the good aperture. So what we have we do to do is always to select a heat plucker that can arrive at five millimeter from the working length. We have to select a, a plugger to pack the good aperture that can arrive at five millimeter and even we need, always need a good cone to carry out this kind of obturation. So uh, is a, a single stroke up to the uh, working length. We start with the erogation of the heat source when we are at two millimeter from the building, bending point and then, but we continue to press the tip up to the bending point. And then we have with the plugger to collect the good aperture that is remaining in the lateral wall. And then we have to continue to pack. And for the back filling, we use the same technique that we have seen for the shielder technique. So we use the AKV fill thanks to the bendable needle. The third technique, uh, this is, sorry, the follow up. The third technique is the squirting technique. To do this, to carry out this squirting technique, we use just the AKV fill system. So this technique is a straight injection of good aperture that can free uh, <coughs> five millimeter of good aperture that we can pack. And then we know that it's not so easy to control the overfilling uses using this technique, and that's why I say is uh, the technique that they use in block canals or where the canal are merging. So I do the obturation in uh, the main canal with the shielder or, or the continuous wave, and then in the other with the squirted technique. What's the best among this technique? It is impossible to say according to the literature because this technique depends really on the skill of the operator. So it's normal to have one favorite technique. And uh, which is the easiest one? It is possible to say among these three techniques. But if we are looking for an easy technique, probably the easiest one that we can use nowadays is a technique that arises from the past is the single cone technique, but now not with a conventional sealer, but with a new bioceramic sealer. The bioceramic sealer are enough studied in the scientific literature. We know that the biocompatibility is really good, as even the flowability is really tolerated, even in case of overfilling, and the technique is really easy. We have just to inject bioceramic sealer inside the root canal system, and then we have to use a good aperture cone with the same size of the last rotary file used for the shaping. 
and we have just to pay attention during when we sear the cone off because we have to sear the cone really quickly because we know that bioceramic sealer is not too much in love with high temperature. This is the Seraseal, it's a new bioceramic sealer from MetaBiomet. These are the characteristics of this really interesting uh, bioceramic sealer. And definitely, I'm a clinician. This is a great opportunity because when it is impossible to find a, a good a, a heat carrier that can arrive at five millimeters from the working length, so it's impossible to have an apical seal a three-dimensional apical seal in the apical part, so probably this is an opportunity for the clinician to get a good result. These are the characteristics of the Sarah seal, and what is really interesting is the flowability. So the flowability is really high, so the sealer moves in lateral canal, the sealer moves easily in isthmus, as you can see in this video, and honestly speaking, I don't know if we can properly speak about a 3D obturation as we are using to conceive, as we are all user of a good aperture 3D filling technique. By the way, it's really easy. You can see how the flowability is really high. And so this is a very good technique for everybody and especially for the GDPs. So I thank you so much for uh, your attention and uh, keep in touch. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Filippo. That was wonderful. And I can see that the clinical part will take a great advantage of technology. Sometimes it's said that the shielded technique is difficult, but with the EQ, it's easy. Sometimes it's said that MTA is difficult, but with the MAP system, it's easy. You know where to carry, you know what to do. So I must say that we cannot work nowadays without technology. Yes. So thanks again, Filippo.